I have here a very nice simple circuit with a cell, which is our source of EMF, and also two components. We've got two resistors in this circuit. And what I'd like to think about is this analogy to try and explain Kirchhoff's second law. For this analogy, which isn't perfect, I'm going to think of my source of EMF as my energy source. I'm going to represent energy with these small uh, bits of Lego down here. Moving around the circuit, we have a lot of these charge carriers. Uh, and what they're going to be doing is they're going to be transferring energy from the cell uh, to the various components within it. So these figures here are going to be the charge carriers. And for this analogy, I'm going to assume that these are moving from the positive end of the cell around the circuit to the negative end. So if you can maybe think of this circuit a bit like an assault course, what we have here is an energy station. And every time uh, the charge carries, which are these people, they move through the cell, they pick up uh, a source of energy. Uh, and what we have here, the EMF, is the amount of energy per unit charge. Uh, so that's going to be uh, where they pick it up. Now as they go around this assault course, what they have are various obstacles. And what we have here are a couple of resistors. And we can think of those a bit like a couple of walls that the charge carriers have to move over. So these resistors here, we can maybe think about as a couple of walls. So here we have these obstacles, and imagine uh, effectively there's no resistance in the wire, so that's kind of fairly easy jogging. When, uh, they get to, when a charge carrier gets an obstacle, what it's got to do is got to give up some energy in order to get over it. So in order to get over this first obstacle, uh, they, he's basically got to uh, transfer one unit of energy. Uh, and then there's another obstacle ahead, so he's going to transfer the other unit of energy there. And what we have here is a potential difference across each component, uh, which is effectively the energy per unit charge, which is transferred from electrical energy into other forms. So uh, it gets rid of the energy, carries on normal jogging, and then picks up energy at the cell, and that uh, repeats. And what we have here is two objects which have maybe an equal resistance, and therefore effectively they're the same height obstacle on the course. And the charge carrier looking ahead uh, sees that he's got to basically use up 50% of the energy here and 50% of the energy up there. So it is not a perfect analogy, and there's uh, a number of maybe mistakes with it uh, that we can that I've uh, addressed in the comments below. But it's a good way of thinking about the energy being transferred into the circuit per unit charge, and then the energy being transferred out of the circuit per unit charge. Now if I had a slightly more complicated circuit, perhaps uh, a parallel circuit with two resistors with the same resistance, we could again think about this like an assault course. We've got an assault course that everybody has to go through the same start, but there's a junction here and what we see is that maybe half the people go this way and half the people go around that way. And it's the same kind of thing here where the charge carriers, uh, although we might have the same uh, number of charge carriers over here, 50% of them go one way and 50% go the other way. And what we have here is uh, maybe an example of Kirchhoff's first law, where we can look at any junction or any pathway in that uh, circuit, and uh, the, the number of people going this way plus the number of people going this way is equal to the number of people coming in that way. So that's maybe a way of thinking about Kirchhoff's first law. But we can also think about this circuit as two separate loops. And first of all, if I think about this top loop here, what I'm gonna do is just pick that up, so what we have here is maybe one complete loop in the circuit. That's one of the possibilities of going around. If we think about this other loop over here, then we have the other possible loop. So what we have is basically um, the, the charge codes can either move around this way in the circuit or they can move on the other loop here. And what we say is here we have a closed loop. Now to think about this as a kind of continuing the analogy we had before, whatever energy uh, is given to the circuit uh, at the source of EMF must also be given out by that charge carrier as it goes around the circuit. So for example, if this uh, charge carrier here was to gain uh, two units of energy in uh, the cell, then as it goes around the circuit, it can look ahead and see that there's only one pla place to get rid of all this energy. And what it does therefore is transfer its two units of energy out in this component. Uh, so what we have here is effectively the, the EMF is gonna be equal to the potential difference across this component. Now if we look at this other circuit here, and perhaps there's a different charge carrier this time which is moving around the circuit, again it might pick up two units of energy at the cell, but this time it gets rid of its two units of energy at this component at the bottom, because it knows it doesn't have anything else, it has to kind of move around. And again, here, the EMF, the total EMF provided, or the total amount of energy per unit charge provided to that charge carrier, is going to be equal to the total amount of energy that it uh, converts from this electrical energy into other forms in this component. And this is all Kirchhoff's second law really says. If we think about conserving energy, whatever energy we put into the circuit must come out. And Kirchhoff's second law states that the sum of the EMFs uh, in any closed loop in a circuit is equal to the sum of the potential differences around that closed loop. 
So that's pretty much it. If we think about any closed loop in the circuit, which is a path around which the charge carriers could move, then the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the potential differences around that loop. And again, this all comes from the conservation of energy. Whatever energy gets put in per unit charge must also be given out per unit charge.